This edition of the Riddler Report is brought to you by Freaking.com I just called the head U.S. Marshal in New Hampshire. His name is Stephen Monier, and uh, he called me back about 15 minutes later. I have a sort of a backlog of questions I've been wanting to ask him, mostly having to do with his, uh, with uh, the government's treatment of the Browns lately. Ed and Elaine Brown uh, are an elderly Plainfield couple who held federal authorities at bay for eight months back in 2007 after being convicted on tax charges. First, I requested his consent to audio record uh, his call. He politely refused to give it, although he seemed to give it a little bit of thought before he said no. In the past, he's just said no, no, no. I'm always honored when someone trusts my memory that much, but I'd rather be able to record. So I said, all right, I'll continue the interview under protest. First, I asked him about some of Keith Champagne's allegations, or concerns, I guess is probably a better word. Keith Champagne is a Brown supporter who lives in Rhode Island. First, Keith writes, quote, The federal marshals, uh, or the courts, we aren't sure which group, have decided that Ed is not allowed to receive visitors while awaiting trial, or ever, for that matter. Unquote. So, I asked Marshal Monier about this concern. Basically, I just asked him if uh, Ed is allowed to receive prisoners, or is allowed to receive uh, visitors. And Marshal Monier said, essentially, yes. But then he mentioned that there is some sort of process at the Stratford Jail involving a list which Ed would have to submit. He said he didn't know what the status of that was. I asked if Ed had received any prisoner, or again, any uh, visitors in the last couple of months, and Marshal Monier said he did not know. Champagne uh, has also said that uh, Ed has not received any visitors at, lo- at all in the entire 17 months since he's been arrested. So I asked Marshal Monier about that. I said, has he received any visitors at all in the last 17 months? And Marshal Monier said he did not know. Uh, Bear in mind that uh, Ed has been at several different prisons uh, over that period of time, and the only real common denominator here is probably the Marshals, or at least the federal government. Elaine Brown, by the way, has been receiving visitors. Marshal Monier was able to confirm uh, for me that Ed and Elaine have been allowed to meet with each other on a daily basis in order to prepare for their next trial. They're facing various charges related to the standoff itself, although some have called it a non-standoff standoff since federal authorities were not thought to be constantly on the site. Also, there's a very minor scoop that I've been sitting on for the last month or so, and I didn't want to report on it until I gave him a chance to respond. But uh, Concord Monitor reporter Margot Sangerkatz had told me just, I think, in conversation or email, it wasn't in her article, but she had told me that the, um, the arraignment of Ed and Elaine Brown a couple months ago when they were brought back to New Hampshire uh, was actually not announced until, you know, just a couple three a couple three hours uh, before they were hauled into court. So that seemed pretty secretive to me and I asked Marshal Monier about that. You know, why is it that it was such a last minute thing? And uh, he said it was because the indictment was only unsealed uh, a few hours before the arraignment. I asked him if a desire to prevent protesters from showing up helped drive that last-minute announcement. He said basically no comment. I think that may have been the only time during the interview where he said no comment, although he might have said it one other time. Yes, there was at least one other time where he said he didn't, he, would, he wouldn't want to comment he, on a separate occasion where he said he wouldn't want to comment on merits of, of cases. I asked him if he had any concerns about potential mistreatment of Ed at the Wyatt facility in Rhode Island. As some of you may be aware, another inmate uh, housed there roughly the same time as Ed actually died. 
and uh, it was a very scandalous affair that uh, resulted in uh, the federal government's ICE division pulling their detainees out of that prison. So it was a, a pretty big scandal surrounding one of the places where they housed Ed. Uh, but Marshall Monier said he didn't know much of anything about it. He suggested I talk to ICE. However, uh, I will have to say that I got a lot less compartmentalization and a lot fewer uh, claims of ignorance than I expected when I called him. He says there are guidelines for discussing cases issued by the Department of Justice, which he tries to follow. He says Ed is being treated like any other prisoner. He says prison is not a pleasant place, uh, but that they are being treated in a constitutional manner. I asked him about his employment status at the uh, uh, New Hampshire you know, uh, Marshal's office. I guess what normally happens is when you get a new presidential administration, they swap out uh, the U.S. Attorney and the U.S. Marshal, the head U.S. Marshal. He said he has applied to remain in his position, but considers it very unlikely that that will happen. By the way, the picture you see here of Marshal Monier is about 50 pounds ago. He's lost a great deal of weight, and you might not recognize him if you bump into him at the courthouse. I didn't. So, that's the latest I have on the Browns uh, for this April 1st, 2009. It's Dave Ridley signing off for RidleyReport.com. Keene, New Hampshire, the capital of libertarian civil disobedience. The folks over at freekeen.com believe this is the place you should be. If you believe in peaceful non-cooperation, freekeen.com invites you to the beautiful hills of western New Hampshire and invites you to join their peaceful evolution. Freaking.com